everyone. Welcome to the 2023 Open Confidential Computing Conference. I'm excited to be here and it's my privilege to join all of you today. I want to thank Edgeless Systems for hosting this important conference and bringing the confidential computing community together. As someone who has spent the majority of my career in systems and networking software and hardware for distributed computing, security has always been front and center in my career. This industry has been a catalyst for innovation over the years, helping us overcome major technological challenges. Today is no different as we bring our collective ingenuity to solve tomorrow's challenges for securing our digital future in an age of rapid digitization and rising threats. In my current role as Intel's CTO, I have a broad set of portfolio responsibilities, including setting the direction and enabling the engineering of future technology innovation and research programs. At Intel, we have pivoted to a software-defined, silicon-enhanced approach. I also share a passion, like all of you, for the continuous pursuit of security technologies that unlock new opportunities while ensuring technology remains a force for good. Confidential computing has been a long time objective and we are rapidly converging on enabling this technology broadly in the cloud, at the edge, in colos and enterprise data centers. There's of course a lot more to do and today we are here to focus on driving adoption of confidential computing and enabling a call to action to policymakers by setting a high bar for the industry on accountability, trusted software and hardware, and ultimately better protection of users and applications from cyber threats. Today, I will spend time talking about our community's accomplishments and innovations in developing this important foundational technology that has the potential to enable a much higher level of trust from the infrastructure technologies we all use and rely on every day. The work ahead of us is to further build out the technological foundations of confidence computing and finally, our shared responsibilities to take this industry from its current early adopter stage into mainstream adoption. The confidence computing industry has made steady progress in the five years since Intel Software Guard Extensions was released, often referred to as Intel SGX. That was part of our Intel Xeon server class products. Since then, the industry has evolved from basic silicon capabilities and a minimal collection of software tools to an entire ecosystem now delivering solutions that address many of our customers' biggest data in use protection and security challenges. Now let's look a little deeper into what that represents. Today, all leading compute silicon providers offer confidence computing, including AMD, ARM, Intel, NVIDIA, and even RISC-V community have announced plans to adopt it. At the January launch of Intel's fourth generation Xeon processor, known as Sapphire Rapids, Intel added additional confidence computing technology known as Intel Trust Domain Extensions, or TDX. Intel TDX is our virtual machine isolation technology that is available this year through select cloud service providers and general availability is planned for later this year with our Emerald Rapids Xeon processor release. In the public cloud, customers have a choice of a variety of confidence computing instances available almost everywhere in the world. They can source enabled platforms from almost every major server OEM and they can populate them with a rich array of open source and commercial software solutions. This community has also initiated a slate of open source projects to address a wide range of confidence computing use cases and challenges, including projects like Oculum and Grameen. In addition, it is also working with the Open Source Security Foundation and the confidence computing ecosystem on policy and standards engagement. Library OSs like Grameen have been a significant accelerator of confidence computing development, enabling unmodified applications to execute in protected enclaves. But a lot more needs to be done. Now I would like to acknowledge some recent progress in this area and on behalf of the Grameen community, welcome Fortanix to the Grameen project and we look forward to their expertise and contributions going forward. I invite you to experience the ease of downloading Grameen and running your own applications and a short demo is accessible via the URL you see on your screen. I would also like to thank my team in Intel Labs and the Open Federated Learning or OpenFL project team on their acceptance into the Linux Foundation as an incubation project. OpenFL, as you may know, is a framework that allows data scientists, especially those in regulated industries, to engage in collaborative, secure, multi-party machine learning without moving their confidential or regulated data off-premise. 
This tech stack of silicon, software, and services that we have built enables our customers to create business solutions for cloud, on-prem, and edge deployments. And it allows customers to protect the privacy and integrity of their most critical code and data assets using either VM, container, or application isolation. As confidential computing continues to evolve, we are witnessing customer use cases segmenting into at least three distinct types. This first category is the security-focused customers that hold sensitive data and valuable code that is constantly under threat from malicious actors. These customers look to confidential computing to deliver additional layers of armor, protecting their data and applications. At Intel, many of our public sector customers and private sector organizations with high value data and code, ranging from banking to social media, are highly motivated by this need to adopt confidential computing. A great example of confidential computing for security hardening is the Fortanix Data Security Manager's key management service, which performs all critical cryptographic and hardware security module functions inside of Intel SGX enclaves. Customers focus on compliance and regulatory requirements fall in the second category. These customers regularly handle sensitive, regulated data, exposing them to stiff penalties in some cases or other liabilities if data is compromised. I know this area firsthand myself, having worked for a few years in financial services. Instead of just locking this data away and erecting security barriers to usage, confidential computing offers these customers the ability to activate regulated data via a new class of computationally secure services while remaining compliant, even when collaborating with other parties. At Microsoft Ignite last year, Novartis, Beekeeper AI, and Microsoft Azure presented a secure computing platform based on the Intel SGX technology that enabled Novartis to validate an algorithm that predicts instances of rare childhood diseases using data from multiple healthcare institutions. Thanks to confidential computing, they were able to complete this analysis while keeping each party's data private and compliant. Finally, the third category represents customers increasingly concerned about data control and sovereignty in the cloud. Confidential computing helps ease cloud migration anxieties and adds technological safeguards to data sovereignty strategies by limiting access only to authorized parties. Proximus, the Belgian communication service provider, partnered with Accenture and Scontain to deploy a scalable confidential computing cloud that places workloads based on their compliance and sovereignty needs. Confidential computing helps assure that the data is only accessed properly and adds programmatic trust to their geolocation strategy. Through collaborative competition and plain hard work, our community has evolved confidential computing from a lab concept to a real world technology that is deployable today, meeting varying needs of customers and governments around the world. We know the need for a comprehensive protection model that fills the gap of protecting data in use to mitigate risk is real and existential. Simply put, confidence computing presents a huge market opportunity for our entire industry and our ecosystems. But as leading IT practitioners in our community have noted, we have a lot more work to do before we can seize the mainstream market opportunity and achieve broad deployment of this technology. We are still in the nascent stages of market adoption. If we look at the technology adoption curve for confidence computing, we are currently serving the innovators and early adopters such as all of you with targeted deployments and very specific use cases. Confidence computing is nowhere near standard practice for developers or IT infrastructure managers, but if we embrace a shared responsibility and focus our investments, we can move from being a niche market to one that is mainstream. So the time for all of us to act is now and with a heightened sense of urgency. Less than two weeks ago, and I'm sure you saw this, the White House Office of the National Cyber Director released the Biden Administration National Cybersecurity Strategy. The European Commission released its own comprehensive regulatory proposal for product security last year, known as the Cyber Resilience Act. Both of these are great examples of policy leaders proposing to raise the bar on cybersecurity and data protection measures for both the private and the public sector. Our efforts to develop and broadly deploy confidential computing will further advance this strategy by strengthening cybersecurity and protecting technology and users around the world. If we channel our collective community's investment of time, 
innovation and technology development efforts in three main areas, we can move confidential computing forward to becoming the default mode of operation rather than the exception. Today we live in a cloud-first world where containerization, automation, DevOps flows are standard procedure for high volume mainstream applications. The highly curated bespoke installations we have deployed so far, it's a great start and a great way to learn, but they are not usually deployable with modern operating procedures that mainstream market will demand. Hence, the first area of focus investment needs to be the tooling that enables volume automated DevOps style deployment of complex computing applications and services. The unit of modern workload today for most people is the container. But the container systems the industry relies on were largely defined before confidence computing really emerged to the state it's in today. This makes them largely oblivious to the confidence computing requirements of the majority of workloads running in container Kubernetes-like environments. Integration into automated deployment flows will require new types of containers with metadata that describes their security and confidentiality requirements so they can be readily placed on appropriate hardware infrastructure. We need to recognize that customers' workloads will have a diverse need for confidentiality, integrity, and attestation, which cannot be addressed with single and off switch in a metadata or a one-size-fits-all approach. Some workloads only require virtual machine isolation, yet others may need more granular application-level isolation. Likewise, some may only need attestation of the correct trusted execution environment at launch but others may need on-demand, real-time attestation of the TEE and software during runtime. So the container metadata needs to be specific and granular enough to comprehend these wide ranges of application and customer needs. The Confidential Containers Project in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is working on new types of encrypted containers that define their needs for confidentiality. I encourage members of this community to get involved help define the high fidelity granular specifications that can meet diverse customer needs. The project will benefit from multiple perspectives and the lessons learned from our current deployments and what we need to do for the future. In addition, the hardware needs to make its capabilities known so it can be matched with containers seeking appropriate confidence computing infrastructure. Hardware vendors who are not doing so already should integrate with infrastructure awareness functions like the Kubernetes node feature discovery capability and continue to evolve its capabilities so that each confidence computing workload can identify compatible landing zones. Our customers will demand automated orchestration of confidential workloads via unified control planes, ideally integrated with the deployment systems they are already using at scale. We can take a lot of inspiration from and contribute to open source control plane projects like Marble Run, and Constellation initiated by Edgeless Systems. These projects are tackling the right challenges and wisely building on top of existing service meshes. Finally, confidence computing workloads will be distributed across multiple clouds, on-premise infrastructure, the edge, and will need consistent, coordinated attestation and trust services. It is unreasonable to expect that customers will tolerate three, six, or 10 sources of attestation. Intel has initiated efforts to help address this need for trustworthiness with the introduction of Project Amber. It's an Intel trust service that provides convenient, consistent attestation wherever confidence computing is deployed. For those who would like to learn more about attestation for confidence computing, including Project Amber, please check the conference program agenda to join one of the many sessions. Let's now move on to the secondary focus that can impact adoption of this technology through our community's investment. Many of the workloads customers want to deploy are accelerated or integrated with PCI Express devices, especially confidential AI, machine learning, and HPC. Today, the CPU memory complex, the GPU, and other devices are separate confidence computing domains. It is possible to use device-specific drivers, bounce buffers, and other ad hoc techniques to bridge the gap, but these add latency and have limited features. If we are going to deploy confidence computing at scale in heterogeneous environments, we will need trusted connectivity and seamless resource sharing between TEEs on the CPU and those on the PCI Express devices. Only then can we add these workloads into the wider confidence computing market opportunity. 
Intel continues to advance our trusted I.O. technology, now officially named Intel TDX Connect, and that this feature will enable PCI Express devices to fully integrate with Intel TDX trust domains on future Intel platforms. Intel TDX Connect enables memory sharing, secure movement of data, and participation in common attestation schemas to create a holistic confidence computing environment inside a heterogeneous system. Intel TDX Connect leverages a range of familiar industry standards from the PCI SIG and DMTF and integrates them with Intel platform specific features like Intel TDX and Intel virtualization technology. And of course, Intel will enable TDX Connect on our own devices, but also partner with industry leaders in GPU accelerated computing. I am very pleased that NVIDIA has stepped forward to support Intel TDX Connect, and we look forward to working with the NVIDIA team to bring this to the market. You can check out the specifications for Intel's TDX Connect that are available on Intel's website by scanning this QR code. If you'd like an in-depth tour of Intel TDX, I encourage you to attend the session led by Intel's chief TDX architect, Simon Johnson, that is scheduled for later today. So far, the challenges that I've highlighted to broaden adoption of confidence computing are very technical in nature. I am confident that a creative engineering community such as ours can rise to the challenge. So I would now like to shift to talk a bit about the non-technical area that does require our attention. In my view, the biggest barrier to confidence computing from its early stages of acceptance to broad market adoption is not a technological shortcoming. We'll get there. Rather, it is the abysmally low level of awareness of its very existence among our target customers and the industry experts that advise them. Intel market research conducted in Q4 2022 revealed that more than 80% of IT professionals with responsibility for sensitive data were generally unaware of confidence computing technology. At a recent Intel meeting attended by 30 Fortune 500 CISOs, only two admitted of even having heard of it. Gartner's most recent assessment concludes that confidence computing is moderately beneficial and five to 10 years away from mainstream adoption. By way of comparison, Gartner rated fully homomorphic encryption and secure multi-party computation as transformational technologies that are also five to 10 years from mainstream adoption. FHE and SMPC hold great promise and Intel Labs and others continue to advance toward greater usability. But today, their invasive code changes and computational overhead is measured in orders of magnitude, not the few percentage points overhead attributed to the confidence computing technology we have today from multiple vendors. The industry analysts hold this outlook despite the fact that almost anywhere in the world, a customer could stand up confidence computing instances right now. You can package a confidence computing application in a few hours using a LibOS like Gramine or call up any of the dozens of software vendors for a complete solution. So confidence computing can deliver value today, not five to 10 years from now, even with the technical work that still lies ahead of us. So the interest in confidence computing among regulated industries such as financial services, healthcare, the public sector, and other vertical sectors continues to rise. These customers rely on government agencies, regulatory bodies, standards authorities like NIST, or the PCI Security Standards Council for guidance and recommendations on technologies to help support compliance. Some of these bodies have recognized confidence computing and the need for data in use protections, but more advocacy is needed until confidence computing becomes a baseline security measure. We need greater levels of recognition from the policy ecosystem to drive awareness for this mature technology that is available today and a sense of urgency for action among customers in those regulated industries I gave an example of, for example. Unless we all work together to address the industry's awareness issues, we may not reach mainstream adoption in any reasonable timeline. Frankly, many of our community members will exit this business if we do not raise our profile in market understanding of confidence computing. We can address this by encouraging rigorous dialogue with customers, analysts, industry groups, and policymakers. Industry analysts and policymakers' perceptions may shift as they see prominent customer wins and compelling use cases that confirm the availability of these solutions today from multiple providers. Each member of our community needs to commit to fueling this feedback loop through relentless evangelism and publicizing successful customer use cases. This steady drumbeat will elevate confidence computing awareness to the necessary levels 
for achieving high volume adoption of this technology. In our experience, just a little awareness goes a long way. At that Intel meeting with those 30 CISOs I mentioned, two thirds of them then wanted a follow on briefing for confidential computing after just a short discussion of its capabilities and benefits. That is how quickly we can go from lack of awareness to actually business engagement. Today, let us recognize all that our community has accomplished over the last five years. The pride of inventors and pioneers of our industry is well-deserved and well-earned. At the same time, we should not underestimate the important role each one of us still has to play in shaping the future of the confidence computing industry. To the software developers, particularly those with expertise in application deployment and management at scale, I ask you to prioritize investments in automated containerized DevOps style deployments. There are several ways of accomplishing this. For example, integrating with the confidence computing with high volume deployment solutions that a majority of cloud managers are already using. Another avenue by contributing to open source projects that are targeting this space, such as the Cloud Native Computing Foundation's Confidential Containers Project, Constellation, or Marble Run. Such initiatives benefit the whole industry by minimizing redundancy and fragmentation, allowing it to focus on delivering the higher value added solutions that customers want and need. And I encourage independent hardware and device vendors, such as makers of GPUs, storage devices, and infrastructure processing units, as well as those cloud service providers that use them to start planning now for impending trusted IO technologies such as Intel TDX Connect. And to all the vendors, and especially the Confidential Computing Consortium, I ask you to take on the role of ambassadors of our industry, seeking opportunities to educate analysts, policymakers, and compliance standard setters in government and industry. At Intel, you have my commitment that we will continue to invest heavily in the hardware technologies like Intel SGX, TDX, and TDX Connect. Our developers will continue to be among the most active contributors to open source projects and standards, and our marketing and policy teams are investing in growing awareness and policymaker support. We are all in on confidence computing. We can achieve broader adoption of this critical technology much sooner than some analysts are projecting. I look forward to continuing this journey with all of you taking confidential computing from the niche to the mainstream. Thank you very much.